algebraic fractions. We've dealt with fractions a lot in our lives. Algebraic fractions are not anything special. They're just fractions with algebra in them, like these. Okay? Now, just like regular fractions, if, for example, you are asked to subtract one fraction from another, well, if I gave you something like this, like that, okay, what would you do to that? What would you do to that? You'd probably want to get them to the common denominator, right? In this case, I guess that would be 35, okay? Once they're both over, th over 35, then they can talk to each other, and off you go, okay? It's exactly the same here. These two have different denominators, so I need to work with them until they're the same, and then off I go. So, in order to do this, we're going to rely on many of the skills we've already developed, in particular, factorization. Okay? So before I can do anything with common denominators, I look at these and I say, they're expanded, I need them factorized. So, let's look at the first one. x squared plus x minus 2, I want the numbers to add to 1, multiply to negative 2. What are the numbers? Hmm. 2 and negative 1. They'll, they'll do the job, right? So I'm going to write x plus 2 x take away 1, okay? Uh, you can see how all of this stuff that we've developed and being good at this and being able to sort of do it in your sleep helps you to focus on what this question is really about, which is the fractions. Take away 2 divided by, what can we factorize here? I can just take out a common factor of x. What does it leave me with? So this is one of the clues that you've done it you know, you're headed in the right direction, because you immediately see there's a commonality, right, between these two fractions, okay? Right, now, when you had a look at these, you told me the common factor should be 35. Where did you get 35 from? You, you multiply these two together, okay? Now, were I to give you, say, something like, I'm going to modify these numbers just a little bit. Were I to give you something like that, you could use the same strategy, it would still more or less work. If you multiplied your denominators together, what would you get? In this case, 300. You'll be fine. You'll get the answer out. But that's a big number to choose. I'd love to get a smaller number. I'm actually searching for, not the product of these two things, but the lowest common multiple. What is the lowest common multiple? 15 and 25. What was common multiple, <laughs> not factor, right? So I'm thinking of 15, 30, 45, 60 is the first one that's in common. Do you agree? Okay. So in this case, the lowest common multiple is 60. I want the lowest common multiple for these denominators. Okay. So here's the way I'm going to go about it. I notice, oh, I'll stay with orange. I notice that on this side, I don't have an x. Do you see that? I, I want an x, that I need them to be in common. So I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom. I did that in reverse. I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by x. Right? Do you see that gets me one step closer to having common denominators? Okay. Then I look over here and I see this one is also missing something. What's it missing? Yeah, th this is what's missing over here. So I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by x plus 2. At this point, look at your denominators. They're, they're the same now. So I have common denominators. Fantastic. I can now move to my next line. The numerators, they just subtract. 5x take away whoops, that. I highly recommend, even though a lot of you will think, oh, I can expand this. I highly recommend you wait for the next step because you do too many things together and your brain forgets to do some of them. Okay? So I'll leave that factorized for now. What's my denominator? X, X minus one. X plus. That was the that was the purpose of me putting extra things on here, right? To make this the common denominator in both cases. So x x plus two x minus one. Okay. So I've gotten the common denominator, combined them into one. The last sort of trailing off bit now is this numerator. I can simplify. Right? The whole reason of expanding this is because, like, why is it a good idea to expand this? E expanding makes sense here because, look, there's, there's going to be some like terms here, right, that will collapse down together. 
Uh, in fact, the light tones we're going to get are these guys. Do you agree? Yeah. That's my numerator. Watch out for the negative that comes along for the right. That's an easy thing to forget. <coughs> the denominator here. The denominator I'm going to leave factorized. Hold on a second. I expanded the top. I didn't expand the bottom. Why? Why would you choose to expand one but not the other? Right. Yeah, because it's a lot simpler having the denominator in the unexpanded. Yeah. This factorized form is simpler. And there's no advantage to expanding this guy. Right? You don't get anything better out of it. Whereas there is an advantage to expanding the numerator. Because now I can collect like terms. What is the final line? What's on the top? Divided by, and I'm just going to leave that denominator as it was. Okay. So what I'm trying to communicate to you is two things. Number one, going through a question like this is just built on the bedrock of the skills you've learned before. Factorizing and expanding. Right? But secondly, expanding and factorizing in a question like this becomes something you choose to do, not something you're told to do. Right? No one said, oh, you have to factorize at this point. But to solve the question, there's really no other way to go about it. You recognize, oh, without factorizing, how am I going to work out the lowest common multiple? In the same way, down here, you choose to expand the top, not because someone told you, but because you can see, I can make this simpler if I do. Does that make sense?